Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Donna. Welcome. Uh, today's video is my faves and flops for the month of November and try as hard as I did. Like I honestly couldn't find a flop. Like I know that seems weird, but I really don't have anything that just wasn't working for me at all this month. And I even have something in my faves this month that I think I had in a products that failed me video early on in this whole YouTube career thing of mine. Not career, really. It's not, it's not career, but you know what I mean. So, which is really surprising. So I started picking up some items that I hadn't used in a while and I hadn't used in a while because either I didn't like them, I didn't know what I was doing with them, which is the probability of it all. Because, like, legitimately, when I started doing this YouTube thing, I had only been wearing makeup for a very short period of time in my life, and I'm old AF, so, like, I didn't know how to use certain things to the extent of their usefulness or... Um, to the extent of how they should be used, I guess. So there are some things that I was using wrong. So this month I did try and pick up a lot of things that I had not used in a while or, or didn't find useful in the past and started trying to use them again now that I'm a little more knowledgeable in this, this beauty thing. So, um, so I've got some really great things here, but I do not have a flop this month, which I am shocked at, but actually pleasantly surprised about, because, yeah. It's been, actually, I could probably think of a flop. If I had to pick something that was a flop for me this month, again, in the spirit of picking up old things that I had purchased that didn't work out for me in the beginning and... I thought maybe that was user error. I picked up my Anastasia Brow Wiz again and started trying to use it. There is just like something about this pencil. Like I don't exactly hate it, but I don't love it. I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to press super hard to get the color to, you know, transfer onto my brows the way I want it to. I feel like I can't properly fill in my brows with this guy. And I know that this is more of a, you know, definer. It's more of a draw, draw it out kind of thing. But I feel like a brow product should be useful in all contexts of doing brows. I bought this when I first started doing brows, thinking that, you know, the hype was real, thinking that everybody loves this for a reason, thinking that it was going to be an amazing product and it just didn't work for me. So I put it away. And this month, in the spirit of trying to pick up old things that I know a little bit more about, I picked this up again and tried to use it. And I still find that I just don't like it. It's just a myth product for me. It really is. I I don't hate it, but I just don't like it. I have a $3 e.l.f. eyebrow pencil that I would buy over and over and over again before I'd ever buy another one of these because this is $21 and just not worth it. And the, the amount of product that's in this guy is not worth it, let alone the fact that it just doesn't, the color doesn't transfer very well. When it does transfer, this is auburn, and it comes out more orange. It's definitely more of an orange color. Let me see. That is the color, and it looks really brown, actually, on the screen. But, like, this is literally what I get when I'm pressing on it just a little bit. You actually have to press really hard to get any kind of color payoff. And it actually comes out really orange. So if I had to pick a flop this month, this one would be it. And that's sad to me because I really like ABH products. So on to my list of faves. So four favorites this month. I have uh, quite a few uh, 
makeup items. I do have a couple skincare items and I have uh, just an everyday item. So this actually was brought to my attention by Jessica from GM Beauty. She actually talked about this product and I went out and purchased it because it sounded interesting. I was willing to try a different kind of shaving experience and it is the Gillette Venus sh Shower and Shave Cream. So you can use this as a soap. I don't. I also, I use it as a shave cream. I purchased it for myself and it was like, don't use my shave cream. But my daughter, who is 17 years old, has always had a problem with her armpits rashing out when she shaves her armpits. Like to the extent that she had constant razor burn in her armpits, which is painful, ladies. We all know what it feels like to get razor burn and on the parts of your body that you can't tolerate razor burn. Your armpits are one of them. They're a very tender area. So she constantly had either ingrown hairs, which I thought was a razor problem, but we replaced her razor often enough that it wasn't a razor problem. She constantly had, you know, this burn feeling or redness, uh, razor burn-esque in her armpits. There was constantly a problem. And as soon as she started using this, she has not had a problem with shaving. Her armpits aren't broken out anymore. There's no razor burn anymore. There's So it had to have been the product that we were using as a shave cream, which was also a Gillette product. So it's not the brand. It's just the, the consistency or the type, I guess. This is perfumed. The other one was perfumed. Um, but this is amazing. It comes out like a, like a soap. It doesn't really lather. It just, it comes out like a cream. Almost, I guess, lotion-like. It's it's really nice, and it, it smells delicious. This one is vanilla cream, and I believe the other one is raspberry. I can't remember, but it is some amazing stuff. You guys really need to check it out. It's like five-something, six-something. It lasts forever it because you don't have to spray a whole bunch in your hand thinking that it's going to foam up and then you don't get enough foam or whatever it's just a really amazing shave cream super great for sensitive skin as much as i thought it might not be it's super great for sensitive skin and it's very moisturizing all right the next item i want to talk about is also is actually a skincare item it is this anti-wrinkle miracle worker by philosophy this one is the night cream. I also have the day cream and the, the Miracle Worker eye cream. I can't speak to um, <clears throat> whether it solves a wrinkle problem or not. I don't really have very many wrinkles, and those that I do are super, super fine. Um, so I'm not sure that this is a Miracle Worker in that sense. But I will say that since I started using this and the other item that I'm going to talk about in a second regularly... My skin has never felt so hydrated. It's just, it, I used to do, it's funny because I noticed it more with my last Get Ready With Me when I was filming it and then editing it. When I would do a Get Ready With Me before last week's, I believe it was, like I could hear myself putting on the makeup. I would try and not <laughs> hear myself talk or hear myself putting on the makeup but even through talking I could hear myself putting on the makeup because my skin was so dry that it would just make this atrocious not like you know ASMR noise but it would make this like ratchet dry skin noise and I could hear that I don't know if y'all did but I was very conscious of it so I could hear it in the last video that I did I could not hear it so I was like something's working I think a part of it is this. I know part of it is this. My skin feels so hydrated when I wake up in the morning after putting this on that sometimes I don't use the day cream, which is bad, right? I should also I should use the whole kit and caboodle. But I have used quite a bit of this. I just opened it um, this last month. I've used quite a bit of it. It is a real nice um, texture. It's very moussey and just very hydrating it goes on the skin so nicely and you don't really have to use a whole lot of it I have found that when 
So typically when I put on a facial moisturizer, I will put it on and then I will wash my hands to get it off of my skin. And with this one, I actually just rub it into my hands because my hands are super dry. I just rub it into my hands to get that added moisture into my skin. And that coupled with my next favorite, the Tarte Maracuja Oil, have been amazing things for my skin. So in addition to the hydration that the Philosophy night cream has given me this I put on as soon as I get done with that I put on the night cream and then I put on the oil which maybe I should switch that out but I don't know something it's working for me right now so I'm gonna leave it the way it is this has helped not only hydrate my skin but my skin also looks healthier I feel like like all the properties that are in this have brightened my skin and that was a good catch <laughs> brighten my skin help it helped it to look more healthy I feel like those two products together have been a miracle worker for my skin during the winter my skin is super dry like so dry it's disgusting like I can put something on my face and when I first started using makeup it was winter. I did not have a skin regimen. It was last winter, as a matter of fact. I did not have a skincare regimen, and I would put makeup on, and two hours later, you could see the dry patches in my skin because my skin was so dry. It was winter, and it gets that way in the summer too, but not as much as it does in the winter. I've not had that problem yet. It has been super cold here. I can't see the dry patches on my skin. I can't even see dry patches around my nose anymore, which is crazy. I used to get dry patches up here really bad and around my chin really bad, and I'm just not getting it this year. So those two items have been on par for me. Another thing that I got that is helping with my hydration of my dry AF skin is the Laura Geller Spackle Treatment Makeup Primer and Hydrating. I got this in a haul last month. I started using it at the beginning of this month and it is fantastic. It goes on a lot like the cream, the Philosophy Cream, so I feel like I'm using a lot less of it on my face than I did even the cooling one or I think it's cooling or uh, the tinted one. I love Laura Gallo primers. She is my primer of choice. But uh, this one is pretty amazing and it's cheaper than the other ones. It just goes on your skin. It lays on there so nicely. And you can see how wonderfully hydrating that is. So another item on my favorites list is an item that failed me like nine months ago. <laughs> um, it's one of the first videos I did on YouTube and it's called Products That Fail Me and I'll put it up here in the cards and this was one of those products and it is the Hard Candy Color Corrector Expert Palette. I hated this thing. I hated it. And in an effort to try and renew my spirit over some items that I didn't like or uh, didn't know how to use, I have learned a lot over the last several months about color correcting and I don't know you can probably tell but I use this one and this one a lot we all know that the bags underneath my eyes are my my nemesis I watched a video of a girl and I can't even remember who it was at this point I watch a lot of videos and she put color corrector on and she didn't blend it out I've always blended it out. It's orange. It's orange. And it's green. I've always blended it out. And it didn't do anything for me. She didn't blend it out. And you could see the difference once she put on her foundation between what it was prior to and what it was after color correcting. And I was like, oh, maybe that's the ticket. I'm going to try this. I have used this every single day. At one point, I accidentally put the lid on wrong and then <laughs> had my boyfriend go out to his shop <laughs> and try to pry it open. You can see that there is 
like pry marks all over the lid from him <laughs> trying to pry it open because I had stuck the lid on wrong. It had like wedged itself on there and like it wasn't coming off for anything. And I was like, I have to have it. If I can't get it open, I'm going to have to go buy another one. And I don't want to buy another one. It's a brand new product. I mean, it's not brand new, but I bought it like five months ago and I haven't used it since I bought it because I used it for two weeks and I hated it because I didn't know what I was doing. And now I use it and I feel like even though my under eye bags are there, I feel like they're so much less apparent because the dark the darkness of them is hidden by this guy. I'm so happy to have it. Do I think that it could replace, like if I got a peach and a green, you know, Urban Decay Naked Skin color corrector, do I think it could replace that or is better than that? No. I think that it's definitely... It's solid, so there's there's going to be a difference in that, right, right? The liquid stuff is obviously a lot thinner, so there's going to be a difference there. This is $5, and the Urban Decay stuff is $29. So would I continue to buy this one, or would I purchase that one to try it? I might purchase that one to try it on a sale, but I also know that this one works, so this is the one I would go back to over and over again now that I know how to use it. The last two things I have are eyeshadow palettes and if you guys have been watching my channel at all you probably know these things. Um, either watching my channel or connecting with me on Instagram which all that stuff is down below on how you can connect with me. But <clears throat> the first one I actually got in the BoxyCharm <laughs> and it is this Winky Lux Kitten Palette. This palette I have used so often since I got it that it is just it's so dirty from just sitting around it's actually at the front of my palette thing there because I use it so often these colors are amazing I have used every single one of them in this palette this one is a beautiful crease color this one's a beautiful all over the lid that one's a beautiful brow bone these are amazing colors. This one and this one together are beautiful. This one and this one together are beautiful. Like, I can't tell you how versatile this palette is. I can't tell you how amazing this palette is. I think that you guys should go on to this website and pick one up. I think it's $25. It's got nine pans in it. It is an amazing palette for such a little tiny palette. And we received a Tarte palette in our BoxyCharm, and we received, what else did we, oh, a Pure palette in our BoxyCharm. This is by far the best palette that I have received in a BoxyCharm. I, and, and it's the cheapest, it is the most least, the most least expensive, the least expensive palette that we have received in a BoxyCharm. And it's amazing. It's got a 12 month shelf life. It is from a cruelty free company. It is also paraben free. It is also gluten free. It, it's, it's just a really great palette. The, the, if I can get it open, it's got a magnetic closure and it is rather difficult to open unless you grab onto the lid just right. That's its downfall, and it doesn't have a mirror. Those are its downfalls, but it's a good travel palette. It does stay closed. Like, I can't, I have a hard time opening it when I am grabbing the corner, so I know it's not good grief. I know it's not going to come open in my makeup bag. You know, the magnetic closure is pretty decent. This is an everyday palette. It can be a crazy palette, and it's travel friendly. I mean, it's super small. But the pan sizes are, this has got 13.5 grams of product in here. So the pan sizes are pretty good. And the other palette that I love, that I didn't necessarily want to hate necessarily, but I think when I purchased it, you guys heard me say I'm not a super fan. I just thought that the palette was pretty. It is my Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Like... I can't get enough of this palette. It is an amazing palette. I'm wearing it today. It is so versatile. It's just not travel friendly. It really isn't. It's such a big palette for 
travel. It, it would just be difficult to travel with this guy. But this has every color that you might need in life in it. I think I've used almost all the colors in the palette. I like mixing the colors in here. I, I like the shimmers are beautiful. The mattes are not bad. It does take a little bit of time. The mattes, I'm not going to lie, do take a little bit of time to build them up to the color that you want them to be on your eyes. If I had to give a, you know, if I had to have a hard conversation about this palette, the, the downfall of this palette or the mattes are not fantastic. I do not find that the mattes come close to comparing to, say, you know, even the mattes in the mattes in my Lorac palettes, the mattes in my, even the mattes in my Too Faced palettes. I don't feel like this comes close to. I can't say like Viseart because their mattes are amazing. Like nobody can compare to their mattes, but the mattes in this are, are they're not horrible, but they do take some time. They do take some time to build. So that would be its downfall and that it doesn't have a mirror and it doesn't have a mirror because Jacqueline thought she needed to dedicate it to all of her subscribers, which I think is a rip off really. If you're buying a palette of this size that was 38 bucks, it should have a mirror in it. I mean, realistically speaking, let's talk. It should have a mirror, but this is an amazing palette. I regret pur not purchasing it sooner, but I did try. I did try to purchase it sooner, and I tried multiple times to the extent that I was like, oh, screw this. I don't need this item anymore. You need this item. You need it. It's it's awesome. <laughs> it's an awesome palette, and it's only $38 for 35 shades. The pan size is not bad. The, it's a 12-month product. There are 56.2 grams of product in here for 35 shades. I mean, if you do the math, it's a pretty decent pan size. So you should get this palette. So that is it for my faves and flops this month. Sorry, I didn't really have a flop. I mean, like I said, if I had to pick one, it'd be the Brow Wiz. And that's only because I feel like I have to pick one. Like, it's not a product that I hate. Don't get me wrong. It's not a product that I hate. I just find it very difficult to use and find that I'm tearing out my eyebrows. I find that I'm pressing too hard. I find that I make more mistakes with it than I do with the it brow power or with my, my Mac eyebrows, which is <laughs> my favorite. There's a person on one of the cell sites selling their Mac brow pencil from their BoxyCharm for like 12 bucks on the yard sale website and I want to buy it so bad but I'm like has it been used who's touched it did you swatch it like there how much product is left in there like I can get a brand new one for not very much more than that and you didn't pay that for it <laughs> so I'm like I'm not paying 12 bucks for a product you didn't pay for you didn't pay 12 bucks for that's for sure but I want it so bad <laughs> and it is cheaper than 21 bucks but even the full size brand new from Sephora is only 18 so I'm not paying 12 bucks I'm not gonna do it I'm not doing it Anyways, that's my faves and flops for this month. Thank you guys for watching me. I know that you don't have to, and I appreciate ever so much that you do click on my videos and take a gander and watch for however long you're watching for. I'm hoping that you're making it all the way through, but if not, thank you so much for watching the portions that you are. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and until next time, guys, bye.